notify the IRS. What? What happened to the money I owe? Hold on, I'm getting another call. Episode 18 of Whoa! I want to read that. You know, everyone says that I love every book that I read, and that's simply not true. Once in a while, I do dislike some books. And, uh, you know, I wanted to share a book I didn't like. And that book is called Absolutely Truly. <laughs> Absolutely Truly. Or like, Absolutely Disappointing. <laughs> This week, I wanted to focus on a book that I did like, and that book is called The Imaginary by A.F. Harold, illustrated by Emily Gravett. Now, once every couple weeks or so, I like to go perusing my local bookstores, bookshelves, and this one popped out at me, and I couldn't put it down. Like I said, I totally judge books by their covers, and so should you. Hashtag the best advice. And I almost read the entire book standing in the bookstore I was in. Features the 430 late bus. Buses are starting to arrive. Please begin escorting students up to the 430 late buses. And we have one bus out front at this time. Thank you. Which is already not a good look, because I'm a grown man, and standing around the children's section in any store is, uh, what's the word we're looking for? Uh... Creepy? Creepy, yes, creepy. Uh, yeah. So I bought the book, brought it home, read it all almost in one sitting, and it is spectacular. Imaginary is all about this young girl named Amanda, who one day opens up her wardrobe and finds out that she has a boy living in there. She suddenly realizes that no one else can see that boy except for her, so he's her imaginary friend named Roger. Not Roger. Roger. Which, truth be told, I mean... Imaginary friends, um, it's pretty dorky. The idea of sitting around and talking to yourself for hours and hours and hours on end, um, pathetic. Uh, I'm not gonna say anything. Let's go! Whoa, who said that? It is I, your imaginary friend Ghostface. Could it be? Is it really you? I'm back. Wow, this is so great! Brenda is my imaginary friend Ghostface from when I was a little kid. Hey, Ghostface! And then you betray me! That's right, until I betray- Wait, I didn't betray you. You stuffed me into the bottom of your toy chest and buried me alive. It's taken years to dig myself out of that toy chest grave. How'd you even get here? Did you walk? I used Uber. Uber? How'd you even use Uber? You've been buried since the 80s. That's not possible. Were you have a phone? It doesn't matter. You still have to pay the driver, though. Like, how do you make... You don't have money. Shut your mouth, Bosco. It's curtains for you. Can I, can I at least review the book first? Sure. Review the book. Then I'll fulfill my thirst of revenge. Okay, great. First of all, I have no idea who the audience is for this book. No clue whatsoever. You start reading it, and you're like, Oh, okay, it's for little kids. You know, it's for like a six-year-old. You know, it's, it's all about this girl having an imaginary friend to get into all types of mischief, yeah. But then you find out there's this creepy Hawaiian shirt wearing dude who has an imaginary friend of his own who looks like every girl from every horror movie ever, and he's eating imaginary friends. So on the surface, this looks like an amazing book to give to a little, little kid until dude straight up murders imaginary friends. Kind of like how you murdered our friendship? Anywho, I don't want to spoil too much. But something awful happens to Amanda, and Roger is trying desperately to find her. Now, it all builds up to a wonderfully and beautifully illustrated climax. Uh, here illustrated, hopefully, in this corner, maybe this corner, uh, either corner, by Emily Gravett. Um, here's her quickly and furiously drawing said illustrations from the book, which is creepy at times, but also super gorgeous in the way that she illustrates. I like Scotty Young from Fortunately the Milk, I wish I had this one power to illustrate that. What, what? So if I had to guess the intended audience for this book, I would say, uh, fifth and up, I guess? Or, I suppose, for anyone who thinks it's hilarious that an imaginary friend shoves a six-year-old down a flight of stairs. Wow, that's dark. 
Man as dark as the oncoming storm of vengeance that's about to run wild in your face, Wasco. Who thinks we can work this out, okay? I was six years old, I didn't know what I was doing. I also thought that picking my nose and wiping it on things was a great idea when I was six. You really gonna hold all of that against me? I was six years old, man. <laughs> Chains. <laughs> Hold it right there, you fiendish villain. Pig in a bottle! My other imaginary friend from my childhood. Pig in a bottle? What's wrong with you? Stay out of this, Porky! As a matter of fact, I also climbed out of that toy chest and Ubered over here too myself, just in time it appears. Wow, today was a weird day for Uber drivers. I have an idea. You let us stay and hang out in your classroom and everything will be forgiven. Sound good, eh? Sounds perfect, pig in a bottle. Just don't let him hurt me. Oh, fine. Can I just melt his eyeballs real quick? No, that is not what good friends do. Now pay for our Uber rides, Wasco. Man, I knew you two couldn't pay for Uber. What, do you have a job? Actually, I work for the IRS. You owe the government $70,000. And your kidneys. Wait, what? Not over yet. Still, it's kind of awkward with me sit here. If you like the imaginary, maybe watch my video on the graveyard book by Neil Gaiman. It's good. Also, perhaps you might want to try this video. I haven't decided which one it is yet, but it'll be over this hand right here. You should click it because. Whatever it is, it's probably really good, and it'll change your life forever, or at least kill a good seven minutes of time, which is good, right? I mean, you know, it's not bad. So do you, uh, you like stuff?